Now, you've worked with Dave a lot, <laughs> fair, fair to say. Yes. Right? Um, it, kind of, what do you, what, as an actor, what do you get from his music and how does it help you with your characterization? Um, gosh, where to start? I know. I, <laughs> Sorry. I want to just start by saying that I think Dave is a monster composer, yeah. and I mean that in the best possible yeah. way. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think he's very, very smart and intuitive with writing not only like crazy, complex, beautiful, different, interesting music, mm -hmm. but also writing those things for people mm -hmm. and playing to their strong suits. Mm -hmm. uh, so working with him has been really wonderful and you, you may or may not know, like coming into theater as I would say very much an adult, mm -hmm. uh, not really working with a lot of different people, it, it's been so easy. It's been very easy to work with Dave, even mm -hmm. if we didn't always agree mm -hmm. on what something <laughs> should sound like right. or what a lyric should be or the note. Um, so obviously you've worked with Dave Malloy now many, many times, <laughs> fair to say. Um, how, how do you use his music and appreciate his music and uh, can he use it to develop character, use an actor, you know? Well, I think, I mean, just off the top, Dave is just wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. My experience in the show, I think, is very unique because mm -hmm. Dave was just like, hey, come do this show. And I was like, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's such a unique show. This show in particular, Great Comet, is such a unique piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other show, uh, Ghost Quartet, mm -hmm. also a very unique piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just been such a pleasure to work with someone who is so in tune with the people he's working with. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like working for to create these pieces that are so good at highlighting people's strengths or even weaknesses, and to explain that uh, there's a particular part of my voice that I hate. I absolutely hate it. It's a, uh, it's sort of like right on the threshold, like before I get into my head voice. Right. And I hate singing in it, and Dave likes writing music for me in there because he thinks it sounds this particular way that is very uh, engaging and real. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, so cool though, because I, I, I hear it and I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. 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 But what a compliment as well, that yeah. it's like, you know, this is the, the things that you find negative about <laughs> yourself, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, like, keep it going, yeah. you know? Uh, I, I think also uh, Sunday morning, for example, mm -hmm. the top of that, that is, sits in such a weird part of my voice and I, I love the music and I have a really hard time doing it, but right. I think it adds to the moment yeah, it. it absolutely theatrical does. moment absolutely it. Yeah. and it, it makes your stakes a bit higher it, you know i mean it kind of sets you yeah. like yeah. right okay but it's I'm also, in this. that song follows josh groban doing dust and ashes mm -hmm. and like everyone's still like i'm i run up to the stage i skirt and everyone's like yeah, 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 yeah. Just, okay, and i'm just really like quickly. i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> standing up here i'm gonna go up there and sing about a candle nobody cares <laughs> oh, what am i doing with my life no we can uh, okay. we can cool. never fear thanks guys yeah um and like, let's talk a little bit about Sonia. First of all, tell us, who, who is she? Who is Sonia? Uh, Sonia, as, as we learn in the prologue, is Natasha's cousin and closest friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is that. She is very wholesome and, and dedicated. I, I've gotten to know her very well over <laughs> my time in the show. Decade. Uh, but her dedication to Natasha is something that I think is pure mm -hmm. and is perhaps the only type of that relationship in the show. I mean, also, I mean, you could say also Maria D's dedication to mm -hmm. Natasha is very pure, but she's also interested in a, a good and happy marriage that will be good for the family. Exactly. She's looking at uh, status a lot more. Yeah. Bit, you know? um, but I think, like, Sonia's dedication to Natasha is is very pure and mm -hmm. is is you know i think that's like why when things go south mm -hmm. it is such a emotional moment for her absolutely. So, absolutely i mean we've talked about this before yeah. that sonia alone in the musical theater world there's barely anything that exists like that a song from a girl about her best friend who she loves mm -hmm. and wants to help despite anything. In, that, that in its exist. purest sense, without yeah. a lot of other accoutrement. Yeah. yeah, and that there's no, there's nothing really in it for Sonia. Mm -hmm. Like, it isn't about 
Sonia, yeah. other than to say like, well, this family, this family has been so good to me that, you know, where, how do I, how do I stop this? How do I, I don't want to say like rise above, like, you know, that's that moment where it's sort of everything shifts, like the, the dynamics and priorities of mm -hmm. things shift. Absolutely. Um, but you're right, it is such a, it's a, it's such a beautiful moment, not just the music itself, but yeah, to see that dedication and I think it feels very important to me and special. Like, so, well, let's start with Sunday morning. Like, it's, it's had a bit of a switch up, the start of it in particular, uh, but it's, a it's such a beautiful moment. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it's kind of, it sets Sunday morning off as a, almost a little bit more chilling. Do you know what I mean? Because there's all these kind of ideas of foreshadowing mm -hmm. coming to play now. And, and it, it's something I think it's definitely in the music. You really hear how Dave, Dave works in those yeah. motifs in there that you're like, oh yeah. yeah. Like you really, it's, it's, yeah, it is foreshadowing. It yeah. is kind of creepy. It's uh -huh. a little creepy and just a little creepy. It's yeah. not like something yeah, exactly. bad's going to happen. Exactly. It's like something bad just yeah. might. You're like, mm, that triad, <laughs> I am <laughs> yeah. I feel, suspicious. I'm a little more uncomfortable now. Yeah. We wanted to ask you about the squeak. <laughs> oh yes! <laughs> that was a great moment. Which, which we'll see if it makes it on the recording. Again. I hope it does. Absolutely. Um, it's something I've always done. I think even I did it at Ars Nova. It's like way back when. <laughs> yeah. So and it's, tell, tell, give us yeah, a bigger story. The where, where is the squeak? So it's it's Moscow, and it's right before I leave the scene, and. Uh, Again, it's it's a moment of narration. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if it's actually a moment of narration, but I say, you know, like, uh, her goddaughter, her favorite, Natasha, she will touch you on the cheek. And then I just do this turn around, and I'm supposed to scurry off stage, but when I do the turn, I just go, <laughs> and, and scurry up the stairs. Like, this little, like, to me, it was like, there's this, like, silly, Absolutely. like, Probably something I w would have done yeah. <laughs> as a, a teenager. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I thought it was a great choice to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, we we were sitting in uh, in the um, recording room, and everyone was like, "The squeak." She does that. What, what's what's the, the? What are they? What are what you talking it? about? What's, this, what's the squeak? But uh, we loved it. No. <laughs> everyone was like, "That's great." I, I don't know. It, like, you probably would have heard it at Ars Nova in a room mm -hmm. Ars Nova size. You mm -hmm. know, eighty-eight seats versus. 1400 mm -hmm. uh, and maybe even in the the tent mm -hmm. but I think I don't know that it's mic'd or even if yeah. it is mic'd it's, you're, are you yeah. hearing it over everything yeah. else I don't know but, but someone uh, will someone will because you'll be right in front of them yeah. there's so many moments in the show that I feel like they're just for us mm -hmm. I mean it's Absolutely. great if you guys hear them yeah. but they're like they're for us. The squeak is for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's the joy of the show. It's it's made up of so many of those like tiny, tiny moments all together that are just for a couple people here and there. But that's yeah. what makes it seem so human. It makes it seem like it's so much fun to be a part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it really is. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. How? I mean, so obviously it's been almost five years. Something like that. Now. Uh, five years from like the very first workshop. Right. Okay. okay. So okay. we did a couple workshops. Work workshops uh, before we actually ever went into production yeah um, so and yeah. well, basically like how how is Sonia transformed from those workshops yeah, I mean over time like because oh is she always is she still growing you know what I mean even, maybe, even now we're maybe. in Broadway I right. feel like every time I, I get into a different space with the role mm -hmm. I you have to adapt certain things mm -hmm. uh, you know it's so you're here, and if I were in a room this size, it's not a big deal to be like, okay, I need to perform for you people. Mm -hmm. But suddenly you're in a room like eight times the size, and you're like, okay, I need to perform for these people. And then of course you, know, you just you, you have to change these little things mm -hmm. to make that yeah to make that happen. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, Absolutely. Uh, in that sense, uh, there has been an evolution. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what else. Uh, I've learned. Learn to act more. I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> I don't legit. Really care. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I personally have just gotten more comfortable. Yes. It's not really fair to say like learn to act. But I remember like, <laughs> when I was first in rehearsals with Rachel Schaff and our director. I was uh -huh. like, how do I even do this? And she was like, you're doing great. Just okay. keep doing what you're doing. Well, <laughs> but I think like I personally have gotten way more comfortable on stage. Mm -hmm. Way more comfortable during a role. Way more comfortable interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, how, how it's a kind of cliche question to say, but how much of, of you is insomnia? Because, like you say, so if you weren't an actor, you're not going to be drawing in from all of these different places. It's going to come from inside you. I mean, I think there's. It's fair to say that like a decent chunk of Sonia is me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know that I've ever had to make that kind of decision in yeah, that moment, right. but uh, there, I believe very strongly that you know I would protect my my friends and my family from bad decisions mm -hmm. you know and I think that that's it's important for people also to see that that's a thing you can do you know it's absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. it's such an important like it's a beautiful part of that character mm -hmm. that she's just willing you know yeah. I mean she's ready and, and willing to, to help at whatever cost yeah and and for no one else but you know the person she's serving yeah. to protect